Hi guys, Debbie here. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this eye look that I'm wearing currently. This smoky purple kind of halo eye situation, which I created using this palette, which is the Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity Mega. Got this palette for Christmas. It was my first time trying it. So if you want to see how I created this eye look, we did run into a few issues and I showed you how I corrected them, then why don't we just get into it? <laughs> Okay guys, so before we jump into the tutorial for the look, just a few things about the palette. So there's a lot of shimmers in here, beautiful, beautiful shimmers. If you've not picked this one up and you're looking at it for the shimmers, then yeah, there's some beautiful ones in here. The issue I had is there's not very many mattes at all. You've only got three true mattes in this palette. So you've got this shade here, you've got this one, and then you've got like more of a chocolatey kind of shade there. So it makes it pretty difficult because there's no blending out shades and my blending skills are the absolute worst as I've discovered in this video. I'm not a makeup artist and blending is really tricky for me and it's something I'm trying to work on so I don't want to shy away from doing it because if you don't try things that scare you or that you're not so good at you'll always stay in your comfort zone and you're ability and your skill level will never improve so for me this year for 2021 I decided that I want to embrace that and try to get better at, at the things that I'm not so good at because I tend to stay in my my safe lane really so that being said watch me struggle watch me try and correct it I think the look has come out okay in the end it's super super dramatic and I don't hate that at all because if you've been here before I do love a dramatic eyeshadow look but Particularly in this inner corner here, you will see the issues I had. I came up too far and too like close to my nose and then trying to, to blend that out because these are super pigmented mattes was, was a struggle. <laughs> but you might find it somewhat entertaining at the least. And I think it's important to show that not every makeup look goes exactly to plan because you know it just doesn't and it's just makeup and the more you try different techniques that are out of your comfort zone the more issues you're going to run into but then that's how as I say you, you develop the skill set to try and sort those things out so as I say enough rambling without further ado let's jump straight into the tutorial I'll catch you on the other side with a few more thoughts on the shades that I used to start off the look we're going to go in with this shade going to be creating a halo eye so I'm going to be deepening up with this one I think I want to kind of burgundy smoky kind of halo eye going on so probably this shade this one and maybe this we'll see as we go but definitely going to start with this one and run it through the crease I'm going in with a spectrum b09 this one's kind of an angled one so help me create a little bit of an angled shape as well if I'm doing a halo eye I sometimes like to play a little bit with the shape as well so it's not quite so boring This shade is a lot more pigmented on application than I expected. I expected this to be like a light washer colour and it's definitely not that. This is a dual ended spectrum brush. I'm going to go in with the other side of it and just really drag that out and try and make that more of a wash of colour, which is what I was looking for. Now I've got that first shade down, I want to darken the inner and outer corners. And I think I'm going to use that shade to do it. So I'm going in with a Linda Halberg 303 and I'm going to be pretty careful because I don't want a bunch of fallout. This is one of these sequin shadows with the matte with sparkles, but hopefully it will work to deepen up the outer corner without too much fallout. So I'm just starting to build the foundations for this halo eye. And this shade is blending quite well. I'm just having to be really careful that I don't get too much fallout from it. Just packing that on to start with and then using the tip of the brush to blend it into the mat that we've got in the crease. Probably will use another mat to transition the two in a moment, but I just wanted to kind of place the colours and figure out the structure of the look before I get into too much detail with the blending. So I'm just going to work that, as I say, into the crease a little bit and try and 
flattened out the edges. I think I packed a little bit too much on and I'm going to struggle to do that now, but it's looking sufficiently crazy, but it's going to look okay in the end, I think. To help blend the two, I'm going to go in with this shade up here. This is one of the most pretty mattes in the palette. There's not too many mattes in this palette in any case. And I'm going to use that, as I say, to blend between the two shades that we've put down. I only want to focus that on the inner and outer corners so I want to leave the center part open I always think that looks prettier for a halo eye for me I've gone very intense in this inner corner though this look is going to end up really dramatic but what's new but I love how that shade is looking on the outer corner. It's looking really pretty on the outer corner. I think I just took the, the blend up a little high here, particularly on this eye. So I'm going to work to blend that out. So I'm just using a bit of that kind of raspberry coloured deeper matte to really smoke out this outer corner and to Give us that gradient between the transition shade and that smoky colour on the inner and outer of the lid. I'm going to go back in with that original matte and see if we can lighten up this inner corner. Kaleidos S1 to do that. diffuse this area towards my nose but I'm not hating it I think it's very dramatic I just uh, bring it down just a tad so I'm really using circular motions really working that product in try and get a bit of a blend here I'm not taking any additional product now and I'm just gonna spend a fair bit of time blending until I'm happy with how this corner is looking. It looks top heavy at the moment because we haven't done the lower lash line but I think it will all come together in the end. It's just probably one of the most scary looks I've done at this point. I'll carry on adding a little bit of depth to the outer corner and just bring that up into my crease a bit more so I've got that raspberry matte again. And just add in a touch more of that. These shadows are very, very pigmented, so a little is going a very, very long way. And then just blend in the edges again. Gonna run a bit more of this raspberry matte onto my lower lash line. Just using a pencil brush to do that. Just connecting up with that outer corner and I'm only going to go about two thirds of the way across otherwise this is really going to end up super dramatic. I'm going to lay down the lighter mat the one we used in the crease initially just in this inner part. Fade the two together. And I'm just going to work on just blending this lower lash line out with the brush we started with. Still think I've got some patchiness going on here, so back in with that raspberry mat. I just really want to try and get better at blending this year. I don't think it's the shadows, I think it's the way I work in this outer corner because I know that Pat McGrath has an amazing formula, so it's not the shadows, it's me, and I think I've just got to figure out how to get that blend right. Which is something I've struggled with ever since I started doing makeup, really. I'm not a makeup artist by any means, and I've learned everything I know by watching other people on YouTube, so sometimes I try things and they work, and other times not so much but I think we're we're as good as it's gonna get today anyway 
So now I'm going to go in with NYX Glitter Primer just for the centre part here and right up into my crease. I'm just, as I say, taking it in that centre part, not on the areas we've laid down. I'm going to do one eye at a time so it's still tacky and I'm going to use this really deep shimmer here, this purple one, just in the inner and outer part but not going too far in and that's pretty intense so I'm going to try and keep that just on my lid and then for the centre part I want to use this shade, it's a shifty shade from sort of green to purple so I think that'll look cool in the centre love a duo chrome shade like this anything that shifts blue brown or green purple all those sort of shifty shades are really pretty so i'm taking that right up into the crease so that it gives me the illusion that i've got more lid space than i actually do that's got such a pretty glitziness about it it's gorgeous just going to quickly repeat the same steps on the other eye just going to work just to blend that just across the top there just to diffuse out that shimmer just slightly so I've taken the shimmer incredibly high but I think it does make my eyes look way bigger when I do that I want to highlight my brow bone a little bit I'm just looking at the options we have for that and I think probably this shade will be the best. I'm just taking a very small amount of that though, just in the arch of my brow, just underneath my, my eyebrow there. Just for an extra little bit of glitz when I turn my head. That's super pretty. The shimmers are beautiful in here. I think the mattes are quite intense though and there's only a few options you've only really got three true mattes and they're all quite intense of a shade i'm gonna take that same shade we just used for the brow bone in the inner corner i'm gonna pat that on a brush and then spray it with fix plus i'm just packing that just in the center part and just in the tear duct area i'm not dragging that down onto the lower lash line as i sometimes do This little spot of lightness in the inner corner okay so that's the look to this point just gonna hop off camera for the finishing touches be back with you to show you the finished look and wrap up my thoughts on the shades that I've used in the palette so far okay guys so here's the finished look I just did a baby wing stayed very reserved with that for me I love my big wings but I just did a little tiny wing with the epic ink liner from NYX and in my waterline I've got in with Woodstock from Urban Decay one of the 24 7 glide on pencils kind of been neglecting those and they are so good so decided to use that one I thought it was the perfect pinky shade to go with the look for lips today got in with an old favorite because I wasn't super confident about the eyeshadow thought I need to pair it with a lip I know I love and this one is by Anastasia and it's the shade vintage it's getting a little bit dried up now because I've had this for gotta be two years but I really really love this lipstick it's not too many shades out there of liquid lipstick that are this kind of pinky purpley shade that are just the perfect kind of tone between pink and purple so I do really love this one it's my absolute favorites so yeah we had some issues didn't we in the tutorial as I said in the intro and I just want to talk a little bit more about why I struggled so much as I say there's very few blending out shades that's the palest shade in the palette I wanted to stick to the palette. If I use this again, I'll probably bring in something lighter to help me blend. But that's a beautiful shade, but it's way more pigmented than I expected. And then I deepened up with this shade, I think. Yes, I did. Which is one of those shades that's like a sequin shadow. So quite a bit of fallout with that, but it was the sort of tone that I wanted. And then, as you saw, things quickly kind of run away with themselves because I went too far up with that and then try to like tone it down with using the other matte which is beautiful this matte here this raspberry shade can't wait to use that as more of the focus for my look because I think the tone of that is stunning 
Um, what else did I use? Oh, on my lid, this shade here that looks green as I'm holding up the palette here is like a shift from green to purple and it's just absolutely beautiful. I love duochromes like that. And then I didn't really have an uh, option for brow bone highlighter in a corner that was really quite right for me, but I used that one because I thought that was the best option. And, you know, I think the look has come out okay. I'm not like loving it to be honest but I think it looks okay I wish I'd have done something different <laughs> but there you go that's sometimes what happens but tomorrow's another day and I can do something else with this palette now it has got lots of beautiful options it's just the lack of mattes that kind of make it a lot more difficult to work with so I wouldn't say that this is in any way beginner friendly you know if you just want to pack like a beautiful shimmer over the lid or do a graphic kind of look with shimmers I think this palette will be perfect for that so that's what I'm going to do next time I think I'm going to do a big winged out look and I'm going to pack some of the, the shimmers all along that look and do something very editorial with it I think that could be a lot of fun because there's some beautiful shimmers in here that gold shimmer is absolutely stunning and there's lots of different formulations of shimmers. There's some that are more topper shades. There's some that are more like, that was just more of a traditional shimmer. You've got the duochrome, as I say there. I love the red kind of shades you've got in here. Mix of reds, purples, and, and pinks are, are stunning in any case. So not that I've got it, but I've just got to figure out like how with my makeup style and how I normally do things, which is deepish or mid-tone matte in my crease, blend it out with a lighter shade, pack something deep in the inner corner. That's kind of my go-to. It was very difficult to achieve with this palette in my experience today, but maybe I was just having a bad makeup day because I know that Pat McGrath has awesome quality. I mean, they're ultra pigmented. As I say, blending is not my strong suit. Practice makes perfect, and by the end of this year, I hope to be so much better at it than I am now. So I expect to see a few more fail videos like this while I get the hang of it. But I love to share my makeup journey with you guys, and I think I might do a video soon showing you some of my looks when I started my Instagram and kind of roasting them because, honestly, I've come such a long way. So I encourage you guys, if you're struggling with any makeup technique, just don't give up and keep trying. We will get there together. But that's my thoughts on the palette so far, and obviously you've seen me create the look. And if you've got better blending skills than me, you'll probably be able to recreate it. <laughs> but thank you so, so much for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video and you want to think about subscribing, then I would love to have you. Other than that, guys, hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are. Catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.